Hey guys, it's Shu. So I was a bit apprehensive about making this video because so as someone with long hair who likes to encourage other black women that they are capable of growing their hair long as well, a common response that I get is, oh well, it's because of my genetics. You just have better genes than me. I just don't have good genetics. That's why my hair is short. And I feel like a lot of us are using genetics or even just the fact that we're black as an excuse for why we won't be able to grow long hair. So I didn't want to make this video originally but it would be remiss of me to not talk about genetics on my channel at all because genetics at the end of the day do play a role in our hair growth so that's what I'll be talking about today so first thing is the actual rate of our hair growth how fast our hair is growing so on average hair grows for one fourth of an inch to half an inch a month some people's hair can grow even slower than that and some people's can grow even faster than that in one of my previous videos I misspoke and I said that black people's hair grows the same rate as all other people's hair and while it may be true for some black people that their hair grows as fast as like say a white person on average black the hair of black people grows slightly slightly slower but the point I was making in that video and the point that still stands is that that is not the reason why our hair is short like the differences are small but it is true that your hair may be growing slower than some other people and then so another factor that grows into hair growth that is genetic is the actual time that our hair is growing on our head before it sheds off the antigen phase of our growth cycle which is the how long our hair grows before it sheds off so on average the antigen phase is four to seven years which is a pretty big range and some people's can be even shorter some people's can be even longer which means if you are on the lower end your hair will grow for four years before it stops growing and then sheds off and then the cycle continues whereas someone with a longer growth phase it can take them seven years before their hair stops growing and later sheds off but the thing about growth phases even if you are on the lower end of that and your hair goes for four years without shedding you would still be able to get pretty long hair if you didn't have that much breakage you would still be able to get your hair down your back so it's not something that I want us to hold too too harshly that oh because I have these bad genes I will never be able to get my hair long because it's not true but it is a factor that you may have to deal with another thing that contributes to how long our hair is able to get is our hair's thickness when I say thickness I'm not talking about like the density how much how many hair strands we have on our head but the actual thickness of each individual hair strand because thicker hair strands take less force to break which means you can be doing more to thicker hair strands and you wouldn't get as much breakage as someone who has thinner hair strands so if you are someone with finer hair and you're seeing a lot of breakage yes it is because of your genetics and the fact that you were just born with finer hair okay so those are the main things that cause variances among black people specifically so now i'm sure you guys are wondering okay well so is there a difference between black people and white people or black people and any other race is their hair able to get longer because of their race so when talking about this i'm going to not necessarily talk about it in a black person versus white person perspective but more of kinkier coily or hair texture versus straighter looser coiled hair texture so a lot of studies have been done comparing these two types of hair and what they have found is actually pretty interesting it definitely surprised me to know that there's actually almost nothing different between the two hair types in terms of what the hair is made up of and how strong the hair inherently is so let me read you a quote from from and i'll, I'll link all of the, the studies that i have used for this video down below but according to one of the studies it said the observation of the normal distribution of the cysteine wrench proteins is inconsistent with an inherent weakness so cysteine bonds and cysteine proteins are what give our hair strength and so this study basically looked at how many cysteine rich proteins were present in the kinkier coilier hair types versus the straighter hair types and saw that it was exactly the same so the strength giving bonds that make our hair strong is the same in kinkier coilier types of hair versus straighter hair types so inherently our hair isn't weaker i feel like a lot of us are kind of thrown this idea that our hair at least for me um i definitely kind of had the idea that black hair was inherently weaker but then you may be wondering okay well why am i suffering so from so much breakage 
and how come white people in general or other races don't necessarily have to go through some of that. So the difference between kinkier curlier hair types and straight hair types isn't that inherently there is something weaker about one versus the other or one is stronger than the other. It's all about how the bonds are giving structure to our hair and how it creates a different pattern on the outside which causes different routines for the different hair types. And because our hair takes a little bit more care, it's a lot easier for us to mess it up. Because our hair, kinkier, coilier hair, has all of those kinks and all of those coils, when we're combing it, there's a lot more opportunities for us to mess with that and for us to pull and for us to snag on it, for it to knot on itself, for us to try and detangle. In my past videos in this series that I'm doing, I've talked about how damage isn't something that happens once but is a continuous thing where one act kind of builds upon another. So even right now, if your hair is still on your head and hasn't broken off, just because it didn't break that time that you were rough to it doesn't mean it wasn't damaged. And the next time you are rough to it, there's a higher chance of it breaking. So is our hair inherently weaker? No. But is, for some of us, our hair weaker at this very moment than someone with a straighter, looser curl pattern? Maybe. A lot of tests show that like when kinkier, coilier types of hair are pulled during these things called tensile tests and other tests that measure how easy it is to break, a lot of the times the kinkier, coilier types of hair are breaking much faster than the straighter hair. And in general, compared to the straighter hair types, when tested, the kinkier, coilier hair types have so much more variances in how easily they break. And the reason why there are so many variances in the kinkier, coilier hair types that have been tested is because of the donor and what they were doing to their hair specifically. Because the kinkier, coilier hair types that many black women have honestly just take more work and more effort compared to straighter hair to not damage and to not mistreat. For example, one of the donors who donated their kinkier coilier hair type could have been someone who wasn't very good to their hair, didn't really put conditioner when they were combing it, was kind of rough, did this and that, and that's why they saw a lot of breakage for that hair type. Whereas someone with a straighter hair type could still mistreat their hair and yes, they would see damage, but not to the extent that someone with kinkier, coilier hair texture would see. So while inherently the structure is the same, the types of bonds are the same, the hair that's sitting on your head probably at this moment has gone through more damage than someone with a straighter hair type because of the stuff that we oftentimes due to our hair and I think we're all guilty of this I feel like we can take this information with some pride. It, for me at least, it was pretty interesting to know that no, our hair isn't inherently weaker and we do have the power over how we take care of our hair. Going back to the differences among us as black women, if they're, or if you're not black watching this, the differences among black women aren't things that have to be such a hurdle for us and such a hindrance for us and we can still grow our hair because like I said before and like I always stress on my channel, the main problem is breakage and how we are treating our hair. And if you want to learn more about that, you can watch some of the previous videos in this series. This series, I am just taking some work from the cosmetic science world and showing how we can use it to understand our hair. So you can watch some of the videos in this series or videos from the past that aren't in this series. But at the end of the day, yes, genetics does play a role. Genetics can be the difference between mid back length and butt length, but isn't the difference between shoulder length and butt length. Like if your hair's at your shoulders, it's not genetics. It's something else that you are doing. So don't let this be something that is holding you back, but do know that yes, there are some things in your genetics that are contributing to how your hair grows. So yeah, I really just wanted to make this video. I hope you guys found this helpful. It's really interesting to me learning all of this stuff as well. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.